Hi everyone. So today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. For once, you're not going to be seeing my face, at least not live. <laughs> and I will be walking you through how to do a business analyst job interview presentation. So this is the case where you've applied for a job as a business analyst. You've already had the call. You probably went in for an in-person interview. And then they invite you to come back to do a presentation. So I'm gonna walk you through an example of that when we come back, don't go anywhere. So it's become very common these days for employers to not just want you to come and do an interview, but to also be asking you to do a presentation. In many cases, for business analysts, for other higher level jobs, they're asking for presentations because they want to understand more of how you explain a particular problem. They want to see your soft skills, how you're able to take you know, large problems and break it down or how you can demonstrate an idea. And those are the reasons why employers have become um, more common in asking for a presentation. As a business analyst, that's something that you will do very often in your job. So it makes sense that they want to see how you would do that. So this um, question actually came from a subscriber to my channel and also um, he subscribed to my Facebook page, which you can find on Facebook by just putting um, facebook.com slash carolies and also i have a facebook group called real world business analysis and you can go join that as well so this person reached out to me and he said you know he had a job interview presentation and this was the question that they gave him and he wanted to know what i thought about it so we agreed that i would walk it through for him and i would make a video out of it so that he could have that um to look at I think, unfortunately, I didn't respond to him in time, so he was not able to benefit from this, but hopefully this will help others as we dive into this exact um, scenario. So before I get into the actual PowerPoint of how I would approach this and what I would say if it was me doing the interview, um, first I want to say that I have a video on presentation skills, and I'll link it somewhere that you can go watch before you watch this, just to give you a prep as to what the skills are that you need to do a good presentation. So this is the problem. XYZ Bank is looking to implement a new CRM system. How would you identify stakeholders? How would you engage with these stakeholders? And how would you approach business readiness? Okay, so I have prepared a presentation that would be, um, an example of how I would handle this if I were the person presenting this for a job interview. And um, my slides are, let's see, uh, third, well, 14 slides, which looks like a lot, I know, for 10 minutes. But I've put more information in here than I plan to talk about. I just have it just in case they have a question, I can refer back to a slide. And I don't plan on spending more than the 10 minutes, right? So I will rehearse, if it was me, I would have rehearsed what I'm gonna say to make sure I cover everything within the 10 minutes, even though it looks like a lot of slides. Normally 10 slides would be enough, but I'll show you why I have 14. I've added additional slides in here. Um, and I've broken things down so that they're in, each concept is in its own slide. So as not to kind of cram too much on one slide. It's very important if you're getting an idea across that you make it clear that idea and not try to make it um, too crowded. So not a lot of text, right? A lot of, if I do have text, like this is a very, you know, this is one of the slides that have the most text. Um, I try to break it up to make it very easy to consume. Um, I use a lot of graphics, charts, and other things in here to break up just the text. So before I put together my PowerPoint, I really, you know, sat down and thought about these questions, you know, for a while. And I, I had a brainstorming session. It's what you have to do 
because there's a lot of things here that they haven't told you that you have to assume and you want to make sure that you're making the right assumptions. So first of all, they told you that they're going to implement a new CRM system for the bank. That is a solution. They have not told you what the problem is. You have no idea if this solution is actually solving the problem. So you have to take a step back. As a business analyst, you're always trying to look at what is the root cause? What is it that you're trying to do? And then you can assess to see if a CRM system is actually the right thing to do. Now, they haven't told you this. They haven't told you anything about the bank, anything about their process, anything about what they're trying to achieve. So you have to make a number of assumptions. And it's okay to do that. You just need to make sure your assumptions are stated um, in your presentation so they know that you thought about this, that you didn't just jump and start explaining about CRM. You actually had enough insight to go and look at, look at it and say, what's the problem I'm trying to solve with this CRM? Now, once you've made those assumptions, and I'm going to talk about those in a minute, then when they ask you to identify stakeholders, you know two things right away, the bank and you know the CRM system. So the fact that they're going to a new CRM system means that they already have some kind of process that they're doing this with. Because it's something that the business needs to do to survive, they would have been doing it some other way. So they have an existing system. It could be just a process, it could be Excel, it could be whatever. There is something that they're doing today that may not be efficient, but they're doing something. So you know that there's at least two systems. You also know because it's a bank, there's a hierarchy. There's probably managers. There is the maybe the financial advisor. Um, there's CEOs. There are you know board members. Um, banks have a lot of reporting. They have a lot of regulations. So you can already start to think about some of the 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 stakeholders in this new CRM. Then you have to think about what's the benefit and what's the interest. Because you could have a stakeholder who has absolutely no benefit, but they are very interested because this is how they do their job. So you kind of have to identify them, put it on paper, write it down, and then try to assess what's the benefit of each of these stakeholders in having a new CRM. And then you can start putting it together that way. The other thing is, how would you engage with these stakeholders? It depends on who you identify. If you've identified the manager to be a stakeholder, you wouldn't want to engage with them on every minute detail. You would just engage with them at a reporting level, at, you know, as a summary, as a status update or something like that. And then if it's a financial advisor, you want to talk with them, you want to have interviews with them, you want to, you know, you want to get everything they want to do directly from them, that so there'll be a lot more continuous engagement with the person who's going to be working in this new CRM. So you have to look at it that way. And then when they talk about business readiness, what they're really asking for is how would you as a business analyst help them get from where they are today to using this new CRM system successfully? What are the steps that you would take to get from where you are now to incrementally get to a position where you're using the CRM system to solve the problem successfully? How do you do that? That's what business readiness is. And you think about implementation strategy, you think about training and other things like that, which I'm going to get into. So let's look at the presentation. So first I have a title slide and I'm calling this CRM implementation strategy. And I put my name there and my face, a picture of myself. The reason we're doing this is because you're in an interview, you're trying to make yourself memorable. You're trying to imprint your brand on your audience because you want them to remember you and they want you want them to select you and hire you okay so that's the reason why i'm putting my picture here and not some generic picture of a you know of a business or something else and then on my first slide i talk about myself so here is a slide where i encourage you to put a picture of yourself and then to say something about yourself to make yourself known because you're introducing yourself to the team because you could be making the presentation to people you've already been interviewed with, or it could be that they've invited some other people you've never met before. So it's always good to introduce yourself so they know a little bit about you. And again, that makes you memorable. So you first can say, you know, where you're born, um, you can talk about your education, you can talk about your work experience, or if you don't have work experience, any internship that you've done, or any of the case studies that you've done. And this should be very quick. Remember, you only have 10 minutes, so you're not going to spend too long belaboring the point. The whole personal introduction should be done with under one minute. Then I have a slide 
where I'm talking about myself and the things that I like doing. So for me, I like to travel. So here's a picture of me at Caesar's Palace. Here's a picture of me in China. Here's a picture of me in the Caribbean. And this is again, just to you know, hammer down the point that you want to be memorable. So if you like camping, if you like fishing, put a picture of you catching a big fish or something. If you like um, marathons, whatever you're into, put it in there to make yourself stand out. This is one other way that you can promote yourself, you can be memorable. And you're not gonna spend too long on this, that's why you're putting pictures there um, because it should be a minute the most, okay? Once you've done that, you've talked about yourself, introduced yourself, then you get into the problem. Because again, you know what they've asked you to present on, but everybody in the audience may not know. Now, because it's a job interview presentation, the objective is already implied. You want to present that you know the concepts and so on, and they want to see how much you know and how you can present. So you already know what the objective is. You don't really have to put an objective, but you definitely have to put what the problem is that you're going to be talking about throughout the rest of the presentation. And then I have um, understanding the problem right? And this is to show them that you have analytic ability. So you've already stated what the problem is. Now you're going to show them how you've assessed the problem. So what you're saying here is what are the root causes that require a new CRM? And you're explaining that this is what your understanding of the problem is. What systems or processes are currently being used? Who are the people using these existing systems? Who depends on the output of these systems? Who are the people that benefit from the existing systems? And how is the end customer being affected with the current process? So this is basically getting a lay of the land for you to assess the as is process. And then I have over here, the three things that you're trying to garner or understand is the current process, the impact on the people inside the bank who have to use it, and the impact on the customers who are outside of the bank who are affected by whatever the, the process is inside the bank. So you're looking at it from internal, from external, and what is it actually? Now, you're not looking for them to answer these questions. You're just trying to explain to them that this is the thinking that went behind what you're going to present next. So the next thing is that you could say that you have um, come up with a as is process that, you know, a hypothetical as is process where you're thinking that currently you may have a, a, a more manual process where it's looking at, a, for example, a client list directory, finding a client folder, and if it needs to be updated, attaching, you know, meeting notes, attaching call plans. And then if you need to do a report, then you have to go generate a, a report manually. So you're basically showing them that this is what you assume the existing process is. And the, the real point of this slide is to show them that you can create a flow diagram. What you're trying to show them is that you can look at an existing process and map it out in a diagrammatic way. That's all the point of this. Is. So you're not gonna spend too much time belaboring it. You're just trying to show them that this is what you've done, understanding the current process. So having an understanding of what the process is now, then you can say that you're going to make some assumptions as to how we arrived at deciding that a CRM is the best solution. And then you move on to this slide. So you're saying that you're going to assume that there was a careful analysis done and the CRM is determined to be the best solution for the current problems. You're also going to assume that there was a review of the different CRM options and that they made a choice um, of which one to use. And you're gonna say that you, you assume they chose Salesforce. The reason you're doing that because to go into the lengthy example of how to choose a vendor can take a lot of time to explain. And in an interview, you don't, you don't really wanna to spend too much time. You only have 10 minutes. So if they have any questions about this, you can go back and explain to them what the process would be to choose a vendor. And I have a video, which I'm gonna show you the link to that explains how to choose a IT vendor. So if they ask you, you know, what would you do? How would you recommend choosing a CRM system? You can go watch my video and then you can talk about that. So now that we've clarified um, all of our assumptions, 
Then you get into the first set of questions, which was identifying the stakeholders. So the ways that you identify your stakeholders would be to have different interviews with different people. And based on the conversations, you can determine who are stakeholders by sitting in on meetings. You can have a workshop where you actually bring different teams together and brainstorm things um, to get out all of the stakeholders. You could also just go review some documents that they have. So whatever process documents they have and so on, you can read those and glean stakeholders from that. And also just general observation. You see clients walking in, you see financial advisors talking to them, you see people going into the system. So you can kind of just watch and also see who are the stakeholders. So these are the ways that you can identify stakeholders. Now, once you've identified the stakeholders, what I'm showing here is a stakeholder analysis. So once you've identified them, then you kind of try and understand the benefit and the interest. So here I have like a quadrant. So in the top left, it would be high benefit and low interest. Here would be high benefit and high interest, low benefit, high interest, and low benefit, low interest. So oh, there's some... There's a little bit of a typo here. Don't worry about that. <laughs> so basically your clients will definitely have the most benefit from your CRM, but they may not have the most interest. They don't care that you're using a CRM. They just benefit from the output of that. They benefit from the fact that you can manage their accounts, you can communicate with them timely. They, they benefit, but they don't care what the system is in the back end. So that's why they're high benefit and low interest. So that's how you're looking at it. You're looking at it from the point of view of the CRM, the new CRM implementation, how is that benefiting these stakeholders and who is interested in having a new CRM system? So that's the perspective. Over here, we have high benefit, high interest. So the personal banking rep has a lot of benefit because they're gonna be able to manage their clients better. They're gonna be able to meet their numbers. And they also have a lot of interest because this is their job and this is how they, they do their job. So there's a lot of benefit, a lot of interest for the personal banking rep who would likely be the person using the CRM day to day. Then there's a the sales operation. So they're trying to get more people to, 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 to come into the bank, get bigger accounts, manage bigger funds and so on. So there's a lot of interest in them to manage that. So that this would more likely be a group of people more than just one person. And so there's a lot of interest here and a lot of benefit. Then the VP of client relations, and I'm just making up titles here, but some VP or some higher level, higher than the sales ops, they would benefit because their department would be doing well. They'll be making the numbers, you know, they'll be helping with the, with everything. So they, they definitely want the CRM because they think it's going to help them to make more money. And then the reporting clerk has a high benefit and a high interest because they benefit from being able to do their jobs better. And also they're interested because this is what this is what they do, right? So the benefit is that they can get the, the data they need faster, better, and so on. Low benefit, high interest. This is where it's not really a big benefit to them in what they have to do. But this, when I look at interest, I'm thinking about the way you do your job, right? When I look at benefit, I think of like you, you get a bigger bonus because you do it or you get more clients in or, you know, that's how I look at benefit. So for a CRM administrator, I think they have a high interest because this is how they do their job but it's not really a benefit to their role necessarily. You know what I mean? That's that's how I see it. It could easily be over here. I mean, this is not an exact science, so there could be room for this to be somewhere else, but I think this is where it sits in my estimation. Then the development team, they have a high interest because they want to build better software, but they don't really benefit from having the CRM there. It's just a matter of making the tool work for them. So that's where I put them over there. Then there is the existing system and the CRM system. This is low benefit, low interest. So the CRM system of itself, it doesn't even know of a benefit because it's a system, right? So it's, it needs to be there, but it's not something that's going to affect, um, it's not gonna receive a benefit. So anyway, this is just for you to plot the stakeholders and I don't expect you to go into each one of these in your presentation. You're going to show them this and say, based on the 
stakeholders I've identified. I have plotted them on a graph of benefit versus interest. And for example, clients will be high benefit. And for example, development team might be high interest. And then you move on. If they have a problem later after you finish your presentation, then you can go back. Another thing I need to say is that if you're presenting and somebody interrupts you, it's okay. You can let them interrupt you. But at the same time, you have to be conscious of the time and you want to finish the finish the presentation without, you know, getting too derailed. So you have to be careful about that because, you know, you want them to hire you so you can't shut them down. <laughs> but at the same time, you can say, I'm going to address that later. I'm going to address that in further slides. And hopefully they'll give you a chance to finish. So this is bugging me. And if I don't change it, I'm going to be annoyed the whole time. So let me just go and change this real quick. Oh, benefit. Is there any other typos here? I don't see any. Okay. So as I said, this is not an exact science and there might be other stakeholders that I have not identified. If you see them, please put in the comment which one I missed out. Um, but basically, you want to, the point of this slide is to show them that you can do an analysis, that you can take disparate data and make sense of it, that you can show it in a graphical way, that you can make, um, you can, you can present something in a consumable way. You know what I mean? So that's the point of this. And a picture says a thousand words. So the fact that you can put it in this format will help them get the picture and get the idea across easier. All right. So if you find that showing the stakeholder analysis might trip you up, if you think it might be too difficult for you to explain benefit versus interest and where each stakeholder lands on the quadrant, then you can just simplify it and show a slide like this one where you're just listing out the key stakeholders and some of the other stakeholders. And then when you're talking about it, you just point to maybe two or three from each section and that might be easier for you to explain. However, if you were to properly do this, the stakeholder analysis, I think that would also be impressive. But whichever one you find yourself more comfortable with, that's the one that you should use. So having talked about identifying the stakeholders, now you want to talk about engaging them. So in order for you to engage them, you're basically going to say that you first have to find out what the needs of each of these stakeholders are. You're going to assess the simplest way to accomplish their, you know, their needs. Um, and then you're going to present solutions to the planning team. So you're, you're assuming that there is a governing body over the implementation of the new CRM that you'll have to work with. Um, and you could put that in your assumption as well. I didn't put it, but you could. Um, and then you're going to get approvals from management um, for whatever ideas you've come up with. And you'll also get buy-in from the stakeholders. So basically, you'll engage with the stakeholders at different points based on the level of benefit and interest that a stakeholder has. But everything that you're doing, you'd want to get buy-in from the stakeholders, at least the ones that are people. And for the system, you'd have to make sure that it can work the way you're, you're envisioning. So that's how you engage with them. You're going to talk with them. You're going to meet with them. You're going to give them status updates. Um, and you're going to find out what their needs are and how best you can help them meet those needs with the new CRM. And then preparing for business readiness. So the first thing I thought about when I looked at preparing for business readiness was, how are we gonna implement this new CRM? We could either say we're gonna replace our existing system, or we could say we're gonna integrate the new CRM with our existing system. If we're going to be um, replacing, then the process for business readiness is different than if we're gonna be uh, integrating. So if you're going to be replacing the system, then how will the data be migrated? So you already have data in your existing process or file system or however you're doing it today. How do you get that into the new CRM system? When would you sunset that existing system? When would you get rid of it? When would you have to, um, what are the steps that you'd have to take to be able to no longer use that existing system? what dependent processes will no longer be supported. So if you had a very manual system that had to do a lot of steps, what steps have you eliminated? And by eliminating steps, then what roles have you eliminated and how are you gonna handle that? So that's kind of thinking that you would have to go through to be business ready for replacing an existing um, system with the new CRM. If you're gonna integrate it, so you're keeping the existing system and also adding CRM, then what are the 
integration data points, which, how would you get data between the two systems? What APIs would you need to call? How often would you need to sync data? I mean, this is kind of low level, but it's just going to show that you're thinking through this kind of thing. And who is the system of record? Where does the data live? So would people have to be flipping between two systems? Are they always going to be synced? Do they go to one place for certain data and the other place for another type of data? So those are the thinking that you're just trying to demonstrate that you're thinking through these things. And these are the things that you anticipate to come up in order for you to help the business to be business ready. So again, this is a little bit low level. You're getting into the weeds here where you're talking about the data, you're talking about um, you know, migration and stuff like that. So it is low level, but you have to show that you're thinking at these different levels, right? You can actually get down into the weeds if needs be. At a higher level though, this is a graph that shows kind of the life cycle for the business readiness. So it starts off with you designing a new CRM process. So whether or not you're going to be integrating the new CRM with an existing system, or you're going to be replacing the existing system with the new CRM, regardless, you still have to design a new CRM process. And in that, I'm including getting the system actually developed and um, built out. Once that's done, then you need to, set to support technical documentation. So you as a business analyst would have to provide some technical documents to maybe a technical writer to have things like the help files written and other training materials and so on. Then you also support training activities. Now you could combine these two, but it depends on how the organization is, that you may have training activities separate and apart, such that you would have to train, maybe train the trainer sessions where you train people who are gonna train the rest of the staff as to what the new system is, how the process is supposed to go and so on. Or it could be that you are invited into these training sessions and you would have to give that training yourself. Then there's a whole launch process. There's a whole set of activities that would accompany going live. And so you'd be a part of that. And then once you're live, you also have to do the monitoring and the maintenance. So whenever there's a change in the CRM, how does that affect what you're doing? Um, what new processes would you need to put in place? So there's always going to be monitoring and maintenance. So from a high level, these are the steps that you would be involved in as the business analyst to get the business ready for the implementation of the new CRM. So at this point, you'd have answered all that they asked you. So if we go back to our problem statement slide, you've answered how you would identify stakeholders, you've answered how you would engage with these stakeholders, you've answered how you would approach business readiness. So at this point, I would suggest that you make your pitch and you tell them why they should hire you. And that is because you have analytical skills, you have the willingness to uncover the root causes of problems, you have clear knowledge of how to identify stakeholders and engage with those stakeholders, you have clear ability to create diagrams and graphics to summarize complex data, the understanding of the full life cycle of a new implementation process, and even though you weren't able to fully demonstrate it here, but you do have great documentation skills and you have great interpersonal skills. So you believe that you would be a great addition to their team and you'd really add value to their organization. You gotta make the pitch, right? You gotta make the pitch that you want this job. That's the whole point of you doing the presentation. So I have a lot of confidence in you guys that you can go out there and put the slide together that will pitch yourself and talk about the good things about yourself because you know, that's a great way to punctuate the presentation with here I am, I've just showed you all this stuff, now go hire me. And then the last slide would be uh, thank you on any questions. So again, this is 14 slides long. It does look like a lot, but a lot of these are like title slides and stuff like that. If you time yourself properly, if you rehearse properly, you can get through this in 10 minutes. You can you know, touch on the things that are important, make sure you touch on everything, but you don't have to go in depth for every single one of these, right? You can time it properly and you can get through it in the time that they give you. So again, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful to you. Please like and subscribe and also consider supporting me on Patreon or on PayPal. So guys, go out there and be confident. Go do your presentations for your job interviews and let me know in the comments if you do get the job. Even if you don't get the job, it's still practice. You're not losing anything from having as much practice as you can at doing this. 
I have a lot of confidence in you. I think you can do it. And please let me know so I can bring out my champagne glasses. I'm not even a drinker, but I will have a glass of champagne or even some sparkling wine or something just to celebrate you, right? So have fun, enjoy, be confident. You can do this. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.